We will move on to item five, which is our regular agenda. First item up is an update by the Amador County Health Officer, Dr. Rita Kerr, on the COVID-19 situation in Amador County. Is she, she's been zooming in, is she on? Okay. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Dr. Kerr. I'm glad you're able to hear me. Uh, supervisor, um, crew, and board, and I appreciate this opportunity to update Amador County on the COVID-19 situation. As always, um, the numbers I'm gonna quote exclude Mule Creek State Prison inmates because those cases do not count um, in our county's uh, assignment of tier on the uh, California blueprint for safer reopening. I do wanna note that COVID-19 transmission and case rates have been increasing nationwide, and that is true in California and Amador County as well. At the end of the day yesterday, 348 confirmed cases of COVID-19 had been recorded in Amador County residents to date. There are two data metrics that determine each county's tier color assignment on the state's uh, blueprint for reopening, and those are case rate per 100,000 population and the test positivity rate, both of which are reported as a seven-day average with a seven-day lag to allow for data collection and accuracy. The more restrictive of the two metrics is what determines the tier color assignment for each county. As of today, Amador County will be moved back to the red tier due to two consecutive weeks of increased case counts. During the week of October 18th through 24th, Amador County began experiencing a surge in cases and we recorded 31 cases with during that week. The most recent week of data for blueprint Blueprint tier assignment is October 25th through 31st, and Amador County has confirmed 25 cases with episode dates during that week. And when I speak of an episode date, that is determined for each case by the first day of symptom onset or the date was the test was collected, whichever is earlier. I explained during my last update two weeks ago that the state has recognized that counties with smaller populations can experience large swings in our daily case rate per 100,000 as a result of a relatively small number of newly reported cases. To avoid swift shifts in tier spat status based on small absolute case number changes, an alternate case rate assessment measure or guardrail was developed that may be applied to small counties. In order to qualify for the guardrail to be applied, our test positivity rate needed to remain stable in the orange range of two to 4.9%. And I encouraged residents to get tested. And our county responded and more residents have been getting tested. So we have been able to maintain a stable test positivity rate in the orange range, staying under 3% over the past two weeks. And our number yesterday that we ended up at for the week's tier assignment was 2.5%. Amador County's case rate per 100,000 by itself would have put our county back into the purple tier. However, we entered a targeted engagement process with the state last week and have reviewed our local context of case clusters, as well as our stable test positivity rate and our ability to keep up with contact tracing and containment efforts. Therefore, we are not moved to the purple tier at this time, but because Amador County exceeded the threshold of 21 cases per week for two weeks in a row, we met the threshold to be moved back to the more restrictive red tier. Counties have three days beginning the Wednesday after the tier assignment is announced on Tuesday to implement any changes to business sectors or any necessary closures or movement of activities from indoor to outdoor or change in total capacity served. Because Amador County avoided being moved all the way back to the purple tier, our schools will be able to reopen on Monday, November 16th as planned. Um, again, it is important for us to continue to keep the total number of tests up, that's the denominator of the case rate, in order to offset positive tests in the numerator. Individuals who've been previously tested positive are advised and not recommended to be retested for at least 90 days. 
unless ordered by a clinician. It is not necessary to be retested in order to be released from isolation. We use a time and symptom-based strategy to do that by CDC recommendations. The no-cost verily testing site currently remains open and available this week on Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Next week will be Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Again, graciously hosted by St. Catherine Drexel Parish in their parking lot. And we are very grateful to them for continually hosting that site for our county since June. There is still capacity for testing at that site. Oftentimes, same day appointments are available and turnaround time to get results has been three days, occasionally four. And those more timely results do allow our team to do timely contact tracing and be more effective in controlling the spread by instructing positive cases for isolation, <laughs> identifying their close contacts and putting those individuals into quarantine. Amador County Public Health continues to interview and contact trace each new case of COVID-19 and work in collaboration with health care facilities and congregate settings to um, make sure our containment efforts remain robust. Sutter Amador Co Hospital currently has four COVID-19 positive inpatients in their census, which is a combination of Amador County residents and individuals from outside of our jurisdiction. To date, 40 Amador County residents have been hospitalized due to COVID-19. Amador County has not uh, had any additional deaths due to COVID-19 over the past six weeks. And Jennifer, if you could share those graphs that I provided, are you able to put those up on the screen? Beautiful. Okay. Um, Supervisor Onetto had requested some graphs regarding uh, case rates and death rates um, at the last meeting. Um, I apologize, I wasn't able to find one where these graphs are superimposed on one another. These are published daily by USA Today on a COVID tracking website, and the data source is from Johns Hopkins University, which is doing worldwide coronavirus tracking. This first graph is a snapshot of the United States as a whole, and the top graph uh, shows by day new case rates or, or newly reported cases. So it's not a cumulative total, but a total by day. And then the bottom graph is the death rate per day, new deaths recorded. And you'll see that in the early part of the pandemic, back in March, April, April in particular, the death rate was quite high. And in fact, the CDC uh, reports that at, um, back in April, 6.7% of cases resulted in death. As time has gone on, um, this has been studied and recently published last month in um, the Journal of Hospital Medicine that death rates have gone down for hospitalized patients. And it's a combination of learning more about this virus and how to treat it and having developed therapeutics that are effective in treating this virus. And also a trend toward uh, lower age demographics of individuals getting infected. Um, we'll go ahead and put up the second graph, which is the graph for California. If possible. <clears throat> While that graph is coming up, I will notice that what we're looking at here, uh, again, in California, the uh, death rate here really increased following the July spike. And in general, if we're able to, you know, uh, overlay these two graphs, what is noticed is that case rate spikes happen first, and that is generally followed by a spike in hospitalizations, which is followed several weeks later by the death rate going up. Um, so at this point, I'll pause and entertain questions from either the board or the public. Dr. Kerr, I have one right off. The last time we moved, we had to wait three weeks to move again. Will these yes. lateral moves, will it, are we in red now for at least three weeks? Yes. Or will it depend on the, oh. Yes. The, I was the, hoping the, you were going to say no. In order to move back forward, we'd have to be three weeks stability back into the orange tier. We will remain in red as long as our metrics, our data metrics remain in red. Our hope is that we don't further 
increase activity to the point where we would need to become purple. So we need to keep our testing positivity rate down and our total case rate by our containment efforts down um, in, within the guardrails to stay red. And then we'd have to improve in order to move back to orange. But even if we do, it's a three week, we'd have to do two weeks out of that three, we'd have to have the orange positivity. Yes. Okay. You know, one thing I'd like to bring up, um, looking at the bottom chart, um, mm -hmm. new reported coronavirus deaths by day in California. Um, do you know, is that deaths that are solely attributable, attributable to coronavirus or is it deaths with coronavirus? These are reported by the local health department having been viewed as coronavirus directly caused or contributed to the death of these individuals. So it wouldn't necessarily be just solely coronavirus in? The way I would put it and the way we do our reviews here locally is, for example, someone who has chronic illness, underlying illness, who requires hospitalization from because of coronavirus. Did coronavirus directly result in that person's death? There are times when, for example, it's a cancer patient and they die uh, because of a complication of their cancer, they happen to have COVID. That would not necessarily be con counted as a coronavirus death. In, in our review, that would not be counted as a coronavirus death if the attending physician feels it was the cancer as the primary cause. Someone who say has underlying diabetes and kidney failure, and because of those conditions, they are more susceptible to complications of coronavirus, and they died in the time frame after the infection that can be directly attributable to the virus that is most often due to a pneumonia and respiratory failure because of the virus. That would be counted as a coronavirus death. Uh, one more thing, um, look at that chart, new deaths in California, and you don't mm -hmm. want to take a death light, lightly, don't get me wrong. No. But it looks like the weekly average, with that, it looks like about, it's running probably, if, if you drew a straight line, 75, is that deaths per each week? It's not daily, correct? It's a, it's a, it's a weekly, uh, that's not the one. Yeah, that's it there, the bottom one. Mm -hmm. So would that be 75 deaths per week if you do so, a straight line no, average? It's, it's actually by day, and then they average it over a week in order to report this. So at the week at the end of 11-4, it was just under 50 deaths per day in California. Okay. Okay. So it's kind of like a seven-day moving average. Yes. That was my question. Dr. Kerr, do you want to take questions from the audience now too, or do you want to continue on with your report? No, I'll take questions from the audience. All right, anyone live in the audience have any questions for Dr. Kerr? Oh, here we go. Any Zoomers? Yeah. Okay. Uh, good morning, Dr. Kerr, Jake Eady from KVGC. Um, I just, uh, we had a couple people um, asking us, what are the current county numbers and um, what, are, what are they looking like there? What are the hard numbers, I guess? So hospitalizations, total cases, recovery, stuff like that. Okay, so the, um, let me see here. Let me pull up our, our website. We post that daily. And um, I wanna make sure I give you accurate numbers. So as I said, there are four people locally here in the hospital. There's one person currently hospitalized out of county that is an Amador County resident. Um, excuse me while I unlock my computer here and get that up for you. And of course it's not cooperating. Um, as of the close of yesterday, we had tallied 348 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Amador County residents. Um, we have, let's see, pull up here. We had 30, I'm going backwards here on my chart, sorry. That's fine. Let me pull up the site, that'll be easier. Uh, 
We had 37 active cases yesterday. We actually will have 10 people released from isolation today. We had a, a large uh, group of episode dates all on the same day. So there'll be 10 people released from isolation today. And then whatever um, new activity we add to the tally today will then determine our active case count for today. Um, Jake, what were the other specific items um, that do they we have, were requested? They're, they're asking about uh, total cases and total recovery so far. So the recovery we determine, we, we actually don't use the re term recovery here in Amador County because of the okay. recognition that there are people with long-term effects of COVID-19. In fact, uh, one of the other pieces that I came across in my reading is that um, about 10% of people who are hospitalized at any point for COVID-19 who make it out of the hospital and go home, 10% of them are readmitted to the hospital within a month. Um, oftentimes due to either long-term lung effects, heart effects, or neurologic effects from the virus. So we use the term released from isolation, which means that those people are no longer contagious and they are no longer need to be restricted from the standpoint of not being able to leave their home except to get medical care. Um, and as of yesterday, we had uh, 296 individuals who'd been released from isolation to date. Okay, I think that was about it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, Jennifer, we have a Zoom question. Yes. Go ahead, Jack. Hi, good morning, Dr. Kerr. It's Jack Gorman with Amador Vintners. Um, Hi, Jack. Thank you, thank you very much for, <laughs> for the news today. Um, I apologize. I know it affects you, your you, sector significantly. We're, we're going to be hit pretty hard, um, but you have nothing to apologize for. So thank you very much. But I have um, three clarifying questions I'd just like to ask. So um, mm -hmm. you said three days after the Wednesday. Um, basically, I'm trying to clarify this: the, the the change in tier structure and the modifications to business operations would go into effect mm -hmm. Saturday, December, November 14th. Correct? Yeah. Yes, that's the day they go into effect. Okay, and then with that. Um, at the very earliest, we would then see um, if, if everything came down and the numbers were good, at the very earliest, we would be moving back to, potentially back to orange or, or moving a different tier, um, mm -hmm. would be December 1st then, correct? Three weeks from today? Let's see. So tier assignment on the 9th would be one full week, the 16th. Yes, December 1st would be the first day we could conceivably move back to a less restrictive tier. Right. But we'll be able to monitor that with our numbers week by week. So each yes. week we stay in red is a week, another week we will be in red yes. going forward. Okay. Right. And then the, my third question is to clarify. So um, it sounds like I heard you saying that um, more basically we need more people to be getting tested and coming back with negative results to help to help with the positivity rate correct we have succeeded in doing that and so both um, the community at large has been getting tested and uh, our congregate living facilities have increased the testing of their staff um, at both the state prison and our local long-term care facilities so that has helped to bolster our denominator and um, keep the overall rate in a moderate tier for testing positivity rate. We need to continue that. At the same time, we absolutely need to have people make good choices. And this is kind of my wrap up remarks. I'll go ahead and put it here now, just because it fits. Um, individual actions affect our whole community. We all need to consistently practice the measures that help limit the spread of COVID-19 by wearing a face covering anytime you're out in public keep six foot physical distancing and frequent hand washing, avoid gathering or mixing with others outside your own household, especially where people are in close proximity to one another, not keeping distance and not wearing masks. Outdoor activities are generally safer than indoors. Uh, one of our case clusters is related to individuals who do outdoor recreation together, which is generally naturally socially distanced, the problem is they share rides to get there and they socialize afterwards. And that's where we believe the transmission between individuals in that case cluster took place. If you must share a ride with others outside your own household, wear masks in the car, keep the windows cracked open for airflow and keep space. Don't have three people crammed into the back seat. Uh, keep you know uh, the middle seats open. 
It's particularly important that anybody who feels ill, even with mild symptoms, stay home, especially if you're waiting for COVID-19 test results. If you don't feel great, keep yourself isolated. Great, thank you. And, and um, uh, I will echo that and to say, or, or to fold that into, to clarify that from the business community perspective, um, because this, this, this move will be significant. So from the business community and a business strategy, two of, in, in overall categories, two of the best things that business owners and those that we can be doing are following all of the things that you just said, one, primarily, but secondarily, getting tested frequently and reg regularly. Yes. Great. Perfect. Oh, and one last question. Um, and again, I think I've asked this before, but um, I wanted to clarify one more time. Um, for those that may have, you know, insurance that's outside, if I'm, if someone gets tested outside of Amador County, but they are a resident of Amador, does that number come report back on Amador's numbers? It does. It always reports back to the jurisdiction or the county where the person resides primarily. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you for all you're doing, Dr. Kerr. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other Zoomers, Jen? Any other members of the public? Well, as usual, doctor, thank you very much for all you do. I know that this wasn't the happiest report to bring us, but. No. I do want to have. Fault. I'd like our community to fault. continue to try and take measures to keep our community safe and healthy. That also includes influenza. Uh, Flu activity has been sporadic on the West Coast so far this year. It's starting to pick up a little bit in the upper Midwest. Um, all the things that we do to prevent transmission of COVID with mask wearing, physical distancing, and hygiene will also help, hopefully, uh, minimize risk of influenza spread. But it's still a strong recommendation to get vaccinated for influenza if you haven't already. Now is the time to do it before it really starts to circulate. It's available at many pharmacies and doctor's offices. One last question on your website. Will you put a refresher on the limitations that are available in the red tier? Yes, we will put a link to the latest blueprint guidance. It has been updated uh, okay. by the state and there are some sectors primarily in the personal care services set category that are allowed to remain open that were not before. Okay. Again, thank you. And we'll let you get back to work. And Thank you. Have a good day. You too. All right. 5B.